In the rich drapery of Christian theology, few debates have stirred as much contemplation and discourse as the elaborate dance between divine election and human responsibility. This theological conundrum explores the sovereignty of God in salvation against the backdrop of human free will and ethical response. Divine election, or God's predestined choice of certain individuals for salvation, presents a profound mystery that has captivated theologians across the ages, rooted in scriptural passages such as Ephesians 1, 4, 5 and Romans 9, 11, 16. Conversely, the concept of human responsibility emphasizes the biblical call for personal repentance and faith, as seen in Romans 10, 13 and 2 Peter 3, 9, suggesting an active role for individuals in responding to God's grace. These concepts often appear at odds, sparking questions about how God's control over the cosmic narrative coexists with human freedom and moral accountability. Misunderstandings and misinterpretations abound, leading to oversimplifications that do neither doctrine justice. This essay seeks to investigate the nuanced relationship between divine election and human responsibility within the framework of Reformed theology, proposing that a balanced comprehension of these doctrines not only aggravates theological insight, but also fosters a vibrant, ethical Christian life. By delving into scriptural evidence, historical perspectives, and contemporary theological models, this dialogue aims to illuminate how these seemingly paradoxical concepts harmonize within God's grand design, encouraging believers to navigate their faith jaunt with grace, humility, and a renewed commitment to the gospel mission. In doing so, it aspires to bridge divides within the Christian community, promoting unity and collective growth in discerning the divine mystery that envelops both God's sovereign will and our human response. First of all, the bedrock of any theological dissertation on divine election and human responsibility rests upon a robust grasp of theological bases that are deeply implanted in scripture and tradition. At the core of this survey is the concept of divine sovereignty, which accentuates God's ultimate authority and control over the universe, including the realm of human salvation. This principle of divine election is articulated through passages such as Ephesians 1, 4, 5, where Paul speaks of God choosing individuals before the foundation of the world, and Romans 9, 11, 16, which affirms God's mercy and sovereign choice independent of human action. These texts, among others, assert the Reformed conviction that God's gracious initiative is paramount in the work of salvation, a notion that magnifies the depth of divine love and the mystery of grace. However, this importance on divine sovereignty does not eclipse the significant role attributed to human responsibility within the biblical account. Scripture is replete with calls to repentance, faith, and obedience, suggesting an active human response to God's grace. Verses such as Romans 10.13, which assures that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, and 2 Peter 3, 9 highlighting God's patience and desire for none to perish, indicate the reciprocal nature of salvation. This dynamic indicates that while salvation is initiated by God's grace, it unfolds in the context of human history requiring a response from the individual. Such a foundation does not imply that human actions merit salvation, but rather that a genuine faith, itself a gift from God, naturally expresses itself through repentance and obedience. The apparent tension between divine sovereignty and human responsibility has propelled theologians to analyze various models that seek to harmonize these truths. One prominent perspective within Reformed theology is compatibilism, which suggests that God's sovereign predestination and human free will operate in such a way that they do not contradict each other, but are mysteriously compatible. According to this view, God's governance of all events, including human decisions, reveals in a manner that upholds human accountability and the genuine offer of the gospel. This model endeavors to preserve the integrity of both divine election and the call to faith, suggesting that while God's grace initiates and enables salvation, it does so in a way that involves and respects human volition. Yet the interplay between God's sovereignty and human freedom does not merely reside in abstract theological constructs, but is woven into the fabric of biblical revelation. The descriptions of Scripture, from the call of Abraham to the ministry of Jesus and the early church, show a God who sovereignly acts in history while simultaneously inviting human participation in His redemptive mission. This interaction maintains the relational nature of God's dealings with humanity. Where divine sovereignty does not negate human agency, 
but rather calls it into a meaningful partnership marked by trust, obedience, and love. Also, the doctrine of divine election, when figured out within the broader scope of Scripture, is seen not as a deterministic mechanism that bypasses human agency, but as a divine strategy that ensures the fulfillment of God's redemptive purposes. This election is grounded in God's love and justice, proved by His engagement to save a people for Himself from every tribe, tongue, and nation, and His call for all people to repent and believe the gospel. This uncovers a God who is both transcendent in His sovereignty and imminent in His love, extending grace while inviting a response. In the Reformed tradition, the prominence on God's sovereignty and election is balanced by a great sense of human responsibility to live in light of this grace. This theological balance promotes a profound sense of humility, gratitude, and mission among believers. Recognizing that salvation is entirely of grace compels Christians to live lives demonstrated by gratitude, moral integrity, and a passionate assurance to the gospel mission. At the same time, following their role as agents in God's redemptive plan motivates them to pursue holiness, justice, and evangelism with vigor and joy. In summary, the theological bedrocks undergirding the doctrines of divine election and human responsibility are abundant with biblical, historical, and systematic intuitiveness that invite believers into a richer awareness of God's sovereignty and grace. This examination does not resolve all tensions or answer every question. Rather, it points to the mystery of salvation in which God's sovereign intentions and human responses converge. By holding these doctrines in a potent tension, Reformed theology provides a core that celebrates God's initiative in salvation while affirming the gravity of human response, ultimately leading to a more serious worship of the God who saves. Moreover, the historical trajectory of Christian thought regarding divine election and human responsibility is a mosaic of theological reflection, debate, and development. Tracing this lineage discloses not only the complexity of these doctrines, but also the diverse ways in which the Church has sought to grasp the interaction between God's sovereignty and human freedom. From the patristic era through the Reformation to modern theological communication, the conversation has evolved, chewing extensive shifts in theological method, philosophical groundwork, and cultural contexts. In the early Church, the seeds of this discussion were sown amidst the fertile ground of theological probing. Church fathers like Augustine of Hippo and his interlocutor Pelagius embodied the tension between divine sovereignty and human agency. Augustine's doctrine of original sin and grace reiterated God's initiating role in salvation, repeating that divine grace is not only necessary for salvation, but is also irresistibly efficacious. This view set the stage for a theological legacy that underlined God's predestining grace. Pelagius, by contrast, championed the capacity of human will, arguing for a more synergistic path to salvation where human effort and divine aid cooperate. This debate, fundamental to later theological formulations, underscored the challenges of enunciating a coherent doctrine that respects both the sovereignty of God and the moral responsibility of humans. The Reformation period featured a critical turning point in the discussion with figures like Martin Luther and John Calvin affording fresh acumens into these perennial themes. Luther, in works like The Bondage of the Will, contended vigorously against the notion of free will in matters of salvation, positing that the human will is bound by sin until liberated by God's grace. Calvin, building on Augustine, expressed a systematic theology that included a strong doctrine of predestination, emphasizing God's sovereign choice and election as a comfort to believers, assuring them of their salvation. These reformers did not dismiss human responsibility, but rather recontextualized it within a plan that prioritized divine action, affirming that human responses to God are themselves enabled by grace. Moving into the modern era, the discussion takes on new contours with the advent of Enlightenment thought and the rise of Arminianism. Jacobus Arminius introduced a theological perspective that sought to safeguard human freedom and the universal offer of salvation confronting aspects of Reformed orthodoxy. This sparked the Synod of Dort, which reaffirmed the traditional Reformed positions on predestination and grace. Yet the Arminian controversy accentuated the enduring dispute of uttering a theology that does justice to both divine sovereignty and human responsibility. In contemporary theological conversation, these issues continue to be a source of thought and sometimes contention. The landscape is now more different 
with contributions from across the global church bringing new perspectives to bear on the discussion. Liberation theology, process theology, and open theism represent just a few of the modern attempts to cross the complications of these doctrines, each displaying a unique angle on the relationship between God's action and human freedom. Meanwhile, the resurgence of Reformed theology in some circles has led to a reassertion of classical views on divine sovereignty, albeit often with a subtle appreciation for the role of human agency within a covenantal scheme. The historical perspectives on divine election and human responsibility display an active dialogue within the Christian tradition, shaped by scriptural interpretation, philosophical influences, and pastoral concerns. This dialogue has not led to a uniform consensus, but rather to an elegant dosser of theological thought, demonstrating the Church's ongoing effort to faithfully pronounce the mysteries of faith. These historical growths stimulate contemporary believers to access these doctrines with humility, recognizing the bottom of the mystery they entail and the diversity of faithful responses they have engendered. In doing so, the Church today stands in a long line of theological inquiry, advancing its own voice to a conversation that stretches back to the earliest days of Christian thinking. Furthermore, reconciling the thorough doctrines of divine election and human responsibility within the Christian faith calls for a sojourn into the center of theological mystery, where divine sovereignty intersects with human freedom. This reconciliation does not seek to dissolve the tension through simplification, but rather aims to appreciate the extent and copiousness it brings to our knowledge of God and our place in His redemptive plan. The aim to harmonize these doctrines involves interconnecting with Scripture, tradition, and reason, drawing upon the wealth of theological consideration that has sought to make clear this convoluted relationship. Central to this reconciliation is the concept of compatibilism within Reformed theology, which supposes that divine sovereignty and human free will are not mutually exclusive but are, in fact, compatible. According to this perspective, God's predestined plan and human choices coexist in a way that human decisions are genuinely free and are also part of God's sovereign will. This perception does not render human actions as bare illusions of choice, but recognizes them as real and critical within the divine economy of salvation. Compatibilism respects the integrity of human agency while affirming that all things come to pass according to the sovereign decree of God. This view tests our finite realization and invites us into a posture of humility before the mystery of God's workings. Another vital aspect of this reconciliation involves researching the role of faith and repentance in the economy of salvation. Both are described in Scripture as gifts from God, Ephesians 2, 8, affirming that the ability to respond to God's grace is itself enabled by grace. This dual reality upholds the need of human response to divine initiative, while acknowledging that even our response is undergirded by God's gracious action. It beautifully illustrates the co-action of divine election and human responsibility, where God's calling forth of faith does not negate the authenticity of our response, but rather ensures and enlivens it. The detail of Scripture brings an abundant heiress that showcases this dynamic. The call of Abraham, the exodus of Israel, and the ministry of Jesus Christ all unveil a God who sovereignly acts in history and invites human participation in His meanings. The prophets, apostles, and saints throughout church history are portrayed not as passive recipients of God's action, but as active participants in God's unraveling redemptive story. These narrations affirm that God's sovereign aims always include, rather than exclude, human agency. They bear witness to a God who is both the author of salvation and the one who calls for a response from His people. In addition, the mystery of God's sovereignty, particularly as it relates to human responsibility, is not a puzzle to be solved but a truth to be lived. It informs our worship, shaping it with a sense of awe and wonder at the greatness of God who is both outside limits of us and with us. It shapes our prayers, boosting us to pray boldly for the salvation of others, knowing that God desires all to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth, yet has ordained the means of prayer as part of His sovereign will. It affects our community life, urging us to bear with one another in love, aware that our brothers and sisters are objects of God's mercy just as we are. This reconciliation calls the Church to a mission characterized by grace and humility. Knowing that God's election is a manifestation of His mercy, leads us to extend grace to others, recognizing that we too were once alienated from God 
and brought near by the blood of Christ. It propels us into evangelistic and missional efforts with confidence, not in our ability to persuade, but in God's power to save using our proclamation of the gospel as the means through which he calls his elect. In reconciling divine election with human responsibility, we are invited into a stronger appreciation of the mystery and majesty of God's saving work. It tries us to think acutely, worship fervently, and live faithfully in the tension between God's sovereignty and our responsibility. Rather than seeking to fully understand the incomprehensible, this theological struggle broadens our faith reminding us that we worship a God whose ways are higher than our ways and whose thoughts are higher than our thoughts. In this mystery, there is beauty, and in this tension, there is room for growth, wonder, and the transformative force of grace. Last but not least, traversing the Baroque doctrines of divine election and human responsibility carries with it not only theological, but also weighty practical implications for the life of the believer and the mission of the Church. Learning these doctrines in tandem can intensely influence how individuals live out their faith, how communities of believers interact with one another and the world, and how the Church approaches the great commission of evangelism and discipleship. Far from being minor doctrinal abstractions, these teachings have the capacity to shape the Christian's worldview, ethics, and involvement with society in big ways. Firstly, the acceptance of divine sovereignty and election imbues the believer's life with a profound sense of humility and gratitude. Recognizing that one's salvation and continued sustenance in faith are entirely the work of God's grace can alter an individual's spiritual posture from one of self-reliance to one of deep dependence on God. This realization emboldens believers to live lives of gratitude, cogitating the grace that has been extended to them in their interactions with others backing a community indicated by forgiveness, patience, and love. The assurance of being chosen by God also instills a resilient hope and confidence in the face of life's trials, knowing that one's ultimate destiny is secure in God's unchangeable ambition. Secondly, perceiving human responsibility in responding to God's grace has critical ethical connotations. It challenges believers to take seriously the call to repentance, faith, and obedience, recognizing these as vital expressions of a living relationship with God. This doctrine heartens an active pursuit of holiness, realizing that although believers are saved by grace, they are saved for good works prepared beforehand by God. Ephesians 2.10 This perspective pushes Christians to connect with the world around them, not as passive spectators, but as active agents of God's kingdom, seeking justice, loving mercy, and walking humbly with their God. Micah 6, 8. It impresses upon the believer's heart a sense of responsibility for their actions and their impact on others, motivating a life of integrity, service, and witness. Further, the exchange of divine election and human responsibility has consequential ramifications for the Church's evangelistic and missional undertakings. It dispels any notion of fatalism or complacency, fueling instead a passionate obligation to proclaiming the gospel to all nations. The recognition that God has elected some unto salvation does not diminish the Church's call to evangelism, but rather asserts the means by which God has chosen to call His elect, through the faithful witness of His people. This theological structure emboldens believers to share the gospel with confidence and urgency, trusting that God will draw unto Himself those whom He has chosen. Besides, it inspires the Church to apply in prayerful intercession for the lost, recognizing prayer as a strong means ordained by God for the accomplishment of His saving aspirations. Additionally, the doctrines of divine election and human responsibility confront the Church to consider on its way to unity and variety. Recognizing that the body of Christ is composed of individuals who have been sovereignly called from every tribe, tongue, and nation invites a celebration of diversification within the unity of the faith. It calls for a humble agreement that differing senses of these doctrines should not be a cause for division, but rather an opportunity for growth in grace and knowledge. It reassures believers to bear with one another in love, venturing to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Ephesians 4, 3 In practical terms, these doctrines invite the Church to be a community where grace reigns supreme where the marvel of divine election leads to a vivid appreciation for the grace that has been extended to each believer, and where the recognition of human responsibility advances a vital, active faith 
that seeks to manifest the kingdom of God on earth. This dual attention on God's sovereignty and human agency contributes a booming theological groundwork for living out the Christian faith in a way that is passionately entrenched in grace, identified by ethical integrity, and propelled by a mission to make disciples of all nations. Basically, the practical indications of reconciling divine election with human responsibility reach into every aspect of the believer's life and the church's mission. They shape how individuals view themselves and others, how communities live and serve together, and how the church dovetails in its redemptive mission in the world. These doctrines, not pure academic considerations, are vital to the life and health of the church, calling believers to a greater faith, a more serious witness, and a more fervent pursuit of God's directions in the world. In conclusion, in traversing the thorough theological mural that encompasses divine election and human responsibility, we find ourselves drawn into the focus of the Christian mystery, where the sovereignty of God and the freedom of humanity converge in a divine harmony that goes beyond human awareness. This scrutinization, while testing, is not an adventure into confusion, but a pilgrimage toward more profound faith. It beckons us to marvel at the magnificence of God's grace, which chooses us before the infrastructure of the world, and at the same time, invites our active sharing in the demonstrating of His redemptive plan. The reconciliation of these doctrines does not dilute their tension, but rather advances our theological contemplation, extending a more delicate and hearty framework for understanding the dynamics of salvation. Moreover, this theological endeavor has practical ramifications that extend far beyond the confines of academic discussion, influencing how we live, how we relate to one another, and how we interact in the mission of the Church. It cultivates a community typified by humility, fueled by gratitude, and committed to obedience. It emboldens the Church to proclaim the Gospel with fervor, grounded in the assurance of God's sovereign function and propelled by the imperative of human response. In the end, our ideas on divine election and human responsibility lead us not to a destination of definitive answers, but to a posture of worship before the mystery of divine grace. It is here, in the embrace of this mystery, that we find the truest expression of our faith. A faith that rests in God's sovereign will while joyfully accepting the call to follow Him. As we continue to cruise the intricacies of these doctrines, may our campaign be exemplified by an ever-developing love for God a relentless pursuit of truth, and an unwavering pledge to represent the grace that has been so lavishly bestowed upon us.